Pivot in the house today. And, uh, we're always blessed to have them here, and I trust that you who are here to hear them and their testimonies uh, would be blessed also. So we're going to start with our regular type of service, and then uh, be introducing them in, in a few minutes. But as usual, uh, we have blessings to have head to play. Turn off your phones and turn your attention on to what God has for you today. That you will be ready to receive uh, what he has for you. So listen to the music and let it speak to your heart. Amen? Amen. Sunday morning too, and 
recommend being with your families if you're blessed and fortunate enough to be with them. If not, you be with the next best thing that's also called family, right? Family can come in a lot of different ways, right? Mm -hmm. Praise God. So we thank God for the family of God. Praise the Lord. Okay, um, Friday evening at... Oh, okay. Yes. Celebrate Good Friday, March 29th, 6.30 p.m. at Grace, Mercy, and Peace Ministries International. It's at 25 Van Zandt Street, Suite 8C. I don't know if you know how to do it, but if you go around Van Zandt Street, then you go under the railroad trestle, you take that first left, and it's in that building there. So, and uh, hopefully you'll see someone so you don't get lost. And Pastor Kevin Prophet will be preaching, and he's a wonderful man of God, a dear friend of ours, too. So, praise the Lord. That's Good Friday. Okay. Uh, then, giving by Cash App is something that I want to encourage you all to do. If you don't have a, an envelope or if you don't have a, a, a way of giving it this morning, you can always give by Cash App. And the passwords are Community Baptist Norwalk and Dollar Sign CBC Norwalk. If you need help navigating your way through that app, let Pastor myself know. Yes, we as senior citizens even know how to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, we can help you out. Uh, also, if you want to continue to give to person to person at the end of each month, uh, we will be taking the non perishable. Uh, I am Sam to person to person to help out with people that are in need of food. And that need is not going away. If anything, it's getting worse. The prices are going up even more. And you just don't understand how they could go up anymore, but they are. And some people are still hungry and we want to be a blessing to them. So if you can bring something in, please do that. Praise God. Okay, and Monday prayer meeting. We do it by a conference call. So Pastor's phone number is 203 9840367. If you want to be part of our prayer meeting that on Monday night, you can just give him a call and he can click you in. And uh, we have a wonderful time of prayer. If you don't have the time to do that, but you have some prayer requests, you can just shoot him a text and he will uh, let us know and we'll all pray together. Um, it's a wonderful time, it really is. We've seen God answer mighty. Mighty prayers, um, miracles, small things, big things, everything in between. And uh, almost sometimes, even when we pray, he's already answered it, even as we are praying. You know, he's a right on time God. And so don't ever forget that. Don't ever think that what you, your need is, is too small. And don't ever think that it's too big. It's not. Not our God. He can answer everything, anything, all of it in between. And he cares. He knows every hair on your head. Or maybe some of us every hair that you don't have on your head, right? <laughs> Doesn't matter. He knows. He knows it all. You know? And he has a sense of humor, thank God. That's why he created me, praise the Lord. <laughs> okay. Um, then Bible study is downstairs, 7 o'clock. Uh, with our own Micah Cardamone, who leads it. Um, they have a wonderful time. They don't just study the scriptures. They, I would say, pour into each other. They pour into each other, you know. They uh, are not afraid to get vulnerable with each other and pray for one another and share with one another and try to give answers to the life's problems and things that are going on in their lives. So, praise God. It's a wonderful time. If you have time, 7 o'clock, Tuesday evenings with Micah. Um, then we're going to come back. And, well, then Friday we're going to go to Good, Good Friday service on Van Zandt Street. And then Sunday morning we're going to go down to the beach and dress warm. If it's anything like today, <laughs> it's too cold. And then um, come back here for our worship service at 10 o'clock, which you all are invited to attend. Um, we just wish you the best of... Sundays today, um, happy Palm Sunday, and you know, happy pivot. We're so happy to have you here. We just want you to know that. And, uh, we're happy to have you here anytime, all the time. Okay? So, God bless you all, and just remember that Jesus loves you. We have a friend in Colorado Springs who's a pastor.
He's a missionary to China. He still does Bible studies up in the middle of the night to try to minister to the people in China. And, you know, wherever you go with him, you're going to find him in another booth with another with other people that he doesn't know telling them about Jesus' love. And he always tells people that Jesus loves him. He always does. So Pastor and I have been trying to do that a lot. You know, whenever we go out to dinner or we go somewhere, we try to let people know. And, you know, people are very blessed and they need to be reminded. The Lord knows we are reminded of a lot of the hatred and a lot of the darkness today. But we need to shed the light and spread it and spread his love and let them know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Praise God. Amen. Amen. You know, just adding on, tacking on to what she said about telling people Jesus loves you. You know, so many times when I say that to somebody, you know, especially in a store or something, I said, did anybody tell you this morning that Jesus loves you? And they go, well, I know Jesus loves me. And I said, well, who told you? Oh, well, you know, I just, I just know it. And God speaks to my heart. And I said, no, that, that's, that's great. I'm, I'm so excited that you know that. But I said, did somebody tell you and say it with their mouth that Jesus loves you? And they go, well, no, they didn't. I said, well, let me be the first. <laughs> Jesus loves you. You see, we need to be reminded. And we need to tell each other. You know, sometimes we know it in our mind. Sometimes we know it even in our spirit. But we get beat down with the things of this world, you know. And, you know, you get up and, you know, it's the old saying, you know. You say, good morning, Lord, or do you say, good Lord, morning? <laughs> I mean, what's your way of saying things, you know? We need to be reminded. And as we remind others... We too are reminded and we are blessed. As we bless others, we in turn are blessed. So make sure you, you do that. Amen? Amen. Amen? Well, you can open up your hymnals. We do the old-fashioned thing. We're hymns. Number 59. Blessed be the name. And you can stand if you can stand. Sit if you must. But blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Bless 
Major Bailey, who is recovering from a stroke.
Uh, done. Thank you. So we'll just uh, go to word of prayer. Uh, Father God, I just want to thank you for this time this morning uh, that you've given us to be here. Uh, thank you that we are here with the same, um, I pray that we would be here with the same mindset, uh, the same desire to know you, and to thank you to sing songs of gratitude uh, for who you are, for what you've done for us in terms of our salvation and also in terms of our physical lives how you provide for us and watch over us and thank you for uh, the family and friends the people that you put in our lives uh, to you know guide us and to encourage us as we go through life uh, so thank you for each person here uh, and their families or the friends and fellow believers I pray that uh, this morning we would uh, continue to reflect on our faith, uh, what that means for us, help us to uh, really seek to develop a closer relationship with you. Uh, we would seek to be a witness uh, to those around us and a blessing to uh, people in need, Lord, as, as was mentioned, there's a lot of difficult situations, uh, suffering, conflict, broken families. Um, and we know that uh, the Bible says that we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Uh, so I pray that we can humble ourselves uh, to be honest with you and with each other. And I pray that you just continue to uh, strengthen us, Lord, our faith. We want to lift up these prayer requests this morning, as many different requests that were spoken, as well as unspoken. Uh, those who need healing, Lord, and restoration, we pray that you would uh, continue to touch them and restore them and just to bless them and their families, to give them peace, uh, to encourage those who are discouraged and help us to uh, find ways to uh, be a blessing to those around us. I just want to pray for our country, uh, for our world, uh, for the salvation of our enemies. Help us to uh, learn to love not only our neighbors, uh, to love God, to love our neighbors, and to love our enemies. And so I pray that you would uh, strengthen our faith, that you would guide us each day, and this week as we prepare for Holy Week, 
uh, that we would continue uh, to remember and to honor your sacrifice. Uh, that we would not forget where our salvation calls. And so I just pray you bless the service this morning, uh, the men, the songs that they prepared, and um, just that you would continue to soften our hearts and to open our minds uh, to the truth of your word. And I pray that you would continue to make us uh, the people that you want us to be. And so we thank you, Lord, and praise you for today and for uh, who you are. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, it's my pleasure to introduce, as you guys probably all know, I don't think there's anybody here who has not uh, heard of Pivot Ministry, but uh, I am so happy to have them here today. Uh, it was only a few years ago <clears throat> when I was a senior in high school. <laughs> uh, we just had our 50th anniversary, so uh, I'll let you know it's been a while. <laughs> When I was a senior in high school, my dad was the pastor at the Methodist Church up down in South Norwalk there, and uh, a young man by the name of uh, the, the, the Smalls, okay, Alonzo Smalls, uh, I almost said doctor, I don't know if he got his doctorate, but I'll give him a promotion, hallelujah. <laughs> but he had a brother that, that, that really had a desire to see people get off of drugs, and that Jesus was the answer. And they started a program down in, in South Norwalk that uh, really did fantastic things. And it was because God was in it. Amen. And in fact, you know, and again, uh, you know, it doesn't seem like that long ago to me, but it was in the, the late 80s that the government came and looked at Pivot Ministries and said, wait a minute, you guys are reporting, you know, almost 90% of uh, Success with these guys. Uh, we want to come in and we want to look at your program. What are you doing and, and how can this be true? Now this is the government, mind you, that they wrote up that it said, the thing that makes the difference is the Jesus factor. They put it right there in print. The Jesus factor. The thing that makes a difference is Jesus. And the fact that Jesus does not give up on you. Amen. Now we have a, a, a brother that's not here and it's been the first time in about 30 years that he isn't here this morning. Uh, Bob isn't with us this morning, but Amen. praise God. Amen. Uh, he would always give testimony of being uh, able to get off of drugs and alcohol and it was God who uh, enabled it to happen and he says, you know, if, if he did it for me, he can do it for you. He was speaking to you as, as the brothers. Amen. You know, there was an, another uh, young man that came through the pivot ministry that uh, texted me t uh, just yesterday. I, I'm in contact with him every day with scripture and prayer uh, that says, I would really love to be with you, but I'm not able to make it. Well, here's his testimony. His testimony is he came through pivot mm -hmm. and pivot did wonderful things for him. Amen. And he was victorious until he had a backslide yeah. and he went back to pivot. Yeah. And Pivot put their arms around him and, and loved him and he got through it again and he was successful and, and doing well. And then he backslid again. And he was so embarrassed that he said, oh, I, I, I can't, I can't go back. I can't say, you know, I can't even mention, I can't even show my face, you know. But, you know, it's like when Peter went to Jesus. Mm -hmm. How many times do I have to forgive my brother? Seven times? Jesus said, how about 70 times seven? In other words, he's there to forgive. And so he went through a different program. Now it's been four years that he's been sober. He is back and trusted by his family and that they are seeing the change in his life and what God is doing. And he's holding on tight to Jesus. That's right. So my message to everybody as you see these guys sing and give their testimonies, it's what Jesus is doing in their lives. You know, again and again.
And that dear brother would have loved to be here. And I told you, Chris would have loved to be here with us, mm -hmm. but he's taking care of his father. Mm -hmm. That's his family has trusted him to do. What a trust that he says, oh, I am just blessed Amen. that my family trusts me. Exactly. And that's uh, what God is doing. Mm -hmm. He's moving. He is doing. Mm -hmm. And as you hear these testimonies, I could, you know, I've, I've known these guys for a long time, so I've heard a lot of testimonies. Mm -hmm. Brother, you have too. Yeah. And God is so good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Yeah. So as you hear them today, just be blessed by the men of pivot. God bless you guys. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Give the Lord a hand praise. He's worthy of praise.
Give the Lord a hand. this journey back in 2021 at Pivot Ministries, but actually the journey started a lot, lot sooner, I mean, a lot later than that uh, from the day of my birth. Um, but I'm moving fast forward up to 2021. I got here because my life was a wreck, my life was a mess, and I was totally lost and turned out. Um, but because I came to Pivot Ministries to try to find some order in my life, I found God. God was there. He wasn't there all my life, but God was really there when I came and he spoke to me. Um, I completed the program in September of 2022. Moving forward past that, I had my stroke, or I had a stroke in January of 2023. And uh, my recovery since 2023 to now. Uh, but to say all that is that God is good, and even though that I have drug issue, he let me know that you still need me in spite of everything else that is going on. So he gave me something else to challenge me to deal with, with my life. And I'm grateful for where I am. If it wasn't for Pivot and Jesus Christ and my relationship, I don't know where I would be. And for that, I'd just like to say thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for me. Amen. <laughs>
My name is Ed, and I'm new here at Pickle. And I thank God for me to be here. Because that song went for me. Because I seen myself. If I went back out, I wouldn't be dead. Amen. And I thank God for allowing me to come out and gave me a second chance. Amen. Because when you out in the world with God, thank you, Jesus. When I was out there in the world and I lost everything, I was like Job. I walked through, he God stood by and watched me do all the things that he could I could be killed by all the drugs, all the alcohol, and all the things in the world, guns, knives. All the stuff in the world, God stood by and watched me until I got down to my last. When I got to my body, he said to me, he said, son, are you done with that pipe? Throw that pipe in that trash dumpster and come with me. Are you done? I said, Father God, yes, I'm done. I'm here. I am yours. Do whatever you want to do. I wrote something last night. I told God, I said, God, I want you to break me all the way down to my soul and rebuild me with the Holy Ghost fire from my head to my feet. I want, I want what God can give me. God, I'm all yours. I'm all business with you. No more. Amen. Y'all pray for me as I pray for you. Come on. Oh, man. 
that's a big difference from live rehearsal. Oh, 
Thank you. Whoa! 
Good morning, friends. Um, my name is Ronald Bay. Um, uh, I can't, uh, I'm, I'm supposed to do this in two minutes, but uh, I just want to give you, give you the, the, some truth about pivot. Come on, um, I came in the pivot uh, broken. Um, uh, when I came in, people um, sold in. Uh, they helped, they touched my mind, they touched my heart, they healed me, they accepted me. And uh, I was a box of rocks, I was a lot to deal with. I struggled with anger, stubbornness, disobedience, everything. You named it, and I was struggling with it. I, I was a person to point the finger at you for my problems. Um, through the love of Christ, uh, through these awesome uh, brothers in Pivot, uh, I got rebuilt, restored. Um, I conquered a demon that uh, nobody knew about. Um, I had a habit of feeling like money was everything. And I would choose, if I didn't have money in my pocket, I wouldn't go outside and feel like a man or anything. So during my journey at Pivot, I was given an opportunity. Um, I was allowed to go work for one of uh, the donors of Pivot. And it came a pivotal point when one day I woke up and realized what I got back in my life. The respect for my kids, my beautiful wife, a life I was no longer existing. Um, and seeing that something else arose in me. I wanted to do something else. I wanted to say thank you. I wanted to serve. For once in my life, I wanted to serve people. Um, so I had an opportunity to choose a, a, a job where I would have made some money. But this is my family. Amen. These are the brothers that's the battery in my back. Amen. These are my leaders that show me how to do it. How to do this thing called being a Christian man, serving. And uh, the, the, the brothers that are honored to be alongside of and serve, mm -hmm. uh, I'd rather wash their feet than make a lot of money. Thank you for your support, for the love that you give us, because it's literally, literally the battery in my back to keep me going, to make the next right decision. Thank you.
Praise God. Thank you, man. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Sure. We bless my God. Brothers were saying, you know, I can't even say my name in two minutes, you know. <laughs> when a preacher preaches, you know, you know, sometimes they're just admonishing. But I just really feel that as these guys come and they minister, uh, I just like to have a word for them, a, a little word of a message that God put on my heart. And for the rest of the church, kind of going on with what. Uh, was said that you came to that that you know come to worship. I come to worship. Mm -hmm. My message for you today is just that. How do we worship? Mm -hmm. And I want you to quickly take a look if you have your Bibles in Matthew chapter twenty-five, or pardon me, twenty-one. It talks about Jesus coming in. Uh huh. As Palm Sunday is all about that. I want you to look at some of the parts of that that speaks to us about worship. Now the triumphal entry starts in the very beginning of the chapter, but I want you to look at after he gets there. He gets to the point where he's going to be coming in. He comes to the point where he knows what's going on. Mm -hmm. Nobody else knows what's going on. How many of you, you know, feel like sometimes you look around and you feel everybody else knows what's going on, but I don't know what's going on. Well. But that's where the trust comes in. Amen. And God wants us to trust. He says, so what do we have to do for worship? Mm. Now Jesus met, and it gets away from uh, the text before I get to it. But Jesus was talking to the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman. And the Samaritans didn't worship the way that the Jews worship. In fact, they were so much that uh, it was said Jews don't have any dealings with Samaritans. Mm -hmm. Well, he convinces who he is by telling her things about her life. Mm -hmm. But the point that I want to get to is she's saying, well, where do I worship? On the mountains here or in Jerusalem? Do I have to go to the, to the temple in Jerusalem? Mm -hmm. And Jesus made it very clear. He says, God is looking for those who will worship in spirit and in truth. Amen. It's not about the how. It's not about the where. It's about the who. Yeah. You got that? Yeah. Yeah. Not the where, not the how, but the who. Worshiping him in spirit and in truth. And Jesus is coming to worship and to show the children of God. All the children of God. Yes. All who will receive yes. who he is. Yes. Now I don't know about you, but it's pretty crazy the way that it talks about that. Jesus says to his guys, hey, there's going to be this... The donkey's tied up over here. Just, just go get it and untie it. And mm -hmm. If anybody asks, to say the master has need of it. I don't know what you talk about. Robert stealing a car. You know. <laughs> well, there's a Ferrari down around the corner. <laughs> Tell him that Jesus needs it. Because <laughs> he's going to make that entrance into the city like, you know. No, no. I don't want a Ferrari. Let, 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 let's get a Lamborghini. No, no, no. no that's, that's too flashy. Oh, I know. I need a, you know, some kind of Rolls Royce or something here. No, a donkey, which was a sign of peace. Then the king would come in triumphant, but with peace. Amen. Amen. Jesus doesn't even speak to the crowds. He doesn't say, well, make a rally and put up the signs and tell them where and when we're going to be doing this. Then we're going to rally on the green and we're going to take over the city. Just quietly. On a donkey with his disciples. 
And the next thing you know, the people on the streets are taking off their garments and laying it down in front of Jesus, cutting palm branches and, and waving them and placing them so that the dust and the dirt of that street won't come up. They're doing it for Jesus. We said it downstairs. That they waved the palms. Hosanna, which means save us now. Mm -hmm. Save us now. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Nobody had told them and, and, and said, well, now this is what you're going to say and when you're going to say it. But they, their hearts were full and they understood who Jesus was. As he comes into the city, some people who didn't know Jesus, who is this guy? Oh, this is Jesus of Nazareth. He is a mighty prophet of God. He comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. They're still sitting there going, who's this guy? Who did you say he is? What do we do to worship? be the right place at the right time and be open to who we are worshiping. Amen. When we are in that presence and all of a sudden you understand that it's Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. We fall down on our knees and just worship. We take off our garments. We do whatever it is. He is worthy of praise. Mm -hmm. What can we do to worship him? He didn't say a word comes into the city and changed lives. He comes into the temple. The outer part of the temple was not just for the Jews, but it was for the Gentiles too. And it was there that they were doing really uh, not what God would have them to do. They were exchanging money. They were doing all kinds of things. And it says that Jesus cleansed the temple. As he entered the temple, it says he drove out those who were selling and buying on the temple grounds. You know, when, when I said that I was looking at this, at part of it, you know, everybody thinks of Jesus as, oh, this is the, the radical Jesus. He got that whip and he, he drove them out. And uh, I don't see that happening when I, when I look at it again. You see, I, I look at it again. His presence drove out these people. His holiness drove out these people. The people that were buying and the people that were selling. It wasn't a one-sided thing. He came in. He turned over the temple's tables of money changers and those who were selling doves. Just, this is the biggest thing. He says, it is written. It isn't what I'm saying. It is what the Lord God Almighty has said. It is written. My house will be called a house of prayer. But you have made it a den of thieves. I can, I can see it that as he's saying these things, there's almost tears in his eyes. He says, this is my father's house. And look what you've done to it. It's horrible. It's not what he would have. You've made it a den of thieves instead of a house of prayer for the nations, for everyone. Church, brothers, how do we worship? We need to be quiet before God. Is it great to raise your voice and praise him? Sure is. When we know who he is. That's what I was saying about that song. <laughs> I wish he had ended right then because <laughs> about who he is. Amen. Come to worship. I love the fact that after he calls out these people for doing what they're doing, as he calls out and anoints the house by his presence, he says, this is my father's house. This is a house of prayer. You've made it something else, but it's still, this is a house of prayer. Mm -hmm. 
When we think about going to God and we lift up our hands and we lift up our hearts and we lift up our presence to Him and talk to Him. Prayer is all about talking to Him. Prayer is something that I want you to know right here and now is not a one-way communication. God, I want, I need, I need, I want. I want, I need, I need, I want. Oh God, by the way, you know, I need, I want, I want, I need. And it's not about that at all. It's a communication. It's about repentance. It's about going to Him and saying, I don't deserve even to be in your presence, Lord. But because I'm here, what can I do for you? When we ask God what we can do for Him, it's so much important, more important than what He can do for us. I'm embarrassed by the times that I get upset about, well, it's not going my way. I think that uh, famous song, it was what, Frank Sinatra? I did it my way. <laughs> I did it his way. You see, I want at that last time, and, and you know, you think about it, that when you're called into the presence of God, you know, what do you want to say or what do you want to, I don't want to say anything. I just want to hear. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into all that I've prepared for you. You know, it's, it's like, you know, I know a, a lady who retired. She retired and she had nothing to do, so she started baking. So her daughter was a teacher, so she baked seven dozen cookies to send them to school. Then she started baking for, for all the other kids and grandkids and neighbors. And all she did was bake, 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 bake. Preparation, you know. Can you imagine what it is that Jesus said, I'm going to go to prepare a place that where I am, you may also. Can you imagine what it's going to be like? Hey, I've been waiting for you. Enter in to everything that I've prepared. And be with me. But are we ready to see him? Are we ready to worship him? Are we ready to fall down at his feet? Mm. You know, again, we, we go to certain pictures that we see in our mind that we see what is heaven going to be like. Mm. I can only imagine, you know that song, what it will be like. Will I dance before him? Or will I fall down in silence? You know, we don't know what it's going to be like, but we need to know that it says here, it's a house of prayer. Mm -hmm. We pray for one another. Mm -hmm. Now, this is why I don't think that when Jesus went in, that he was such a bully and, and you know, angry that whipped them and beat them to push them out. I think his presence pushed them out. Mm. I think his holiness mm. pressed them out. I think the challenge of what they had done of making it a den of thieves instead of a house of prayer. Just, they couldn't stand in the presence of God. But who did? Who came in to fill the void? It says that the blind and the lame, the people who the Jewish leadership said, oh, well, you're blind, so you must have sinned and done something wrong. That's why God's punishing you. The lame people, Oh, well, you know, you're only lame because you did something wrong and God is punishing you. No. It says the blind and the lame came into to the outer courtyard where it was time for prayer, a place that they had not been welcomed before. But because Jesus was there, they came in. And it says here, and those who were blind and lame came to him in that temple area, and he healed them. Do we need healing because of the things that are in our lives? There are people here today that need a physical healing and a physical touch. And I believe that God is going to touch people today as we go to prayer. I believe that there are spiritual healings that need to take place. I believe that God is going to do that. I believe that the blindness is not just physical blindness, but there's spiritual blindness that is in our lives, that Jesus Christ today is going to heal and bring us to a spiritual insight that is so far beyond our own 
that it's like, whew, I never thought about it that way. When God gave you that revelation of talking about the, you know, the overturning the tables and he was a radical, God says, no, it's my presence. Amen. You know, my presence. You know, it's like when he was out on the sea, peace, he still to the waves and the winds. And they stopped. Not because of some magic incantation or physical force that was there but because of who he is, who he was and who he will be. Amen. We need to know that he came in and these people came in requesting and needing and broken and blind and lame and he healed them. What did some of the people in the church, the, the chief priests say? They were upset. They were upset, not rejoicing in what was going on, not saying, oh, this is Jesus Christ, the Holy One. Look what he's doing. It only can be God. And God wants us to clean up our act and, and change what we're doing. They came complaining. Mm -hmm. They saw the wonderful things that had been done, but they were complaining. You see, the people who were really praising God the most, the ones who were healed, they weren't really doing it. But it was the children that came along. Look what happened to mommy. Look what happened to daddy. Woo! God is so great. God is so great. Hosanna, save us now. They're praising God, these little children. And I don't know what the ages were, it doesn't say. But the priests were saying, can't you have them quiet down? We don't worship that way around here. We're more formal. Honoring to God. And, you know, if God says be quiet, we need to be quiet. If God says to shout, we need to shout. Whatever he tells us to do, if he says jump, we say how high, Lord. Well, I don't even care. I'll just do it as high as I can. I'll do whatever I can do. I just want to hear your voice. I want to do what you called me to do, Lord. That's what it's saying here. And he says to them, didn't you ever know that out of the mouths of infants and babes who are prepared to praise yourself? He goes on to tell us that Jesus was also telling them. One of the other parts of the scripture says, Hey, if I told them to be quiet, the very stones themselves would cry out. And wouldn't that be more embarrassing to you that the stones would have to do what I've asked you to do? If I said, praise me, and you said, Well, I'm going to have somebody praise me. If you don't, the very stones will. My wife was in a bus when we were over in Israel, and we were driving through the countryside and in almost every field. You know, around here, we, we complain about New England having so many rocks. Well, over there, they have even more. There are rocks upon rocks upon rocks. And she said, all of a sudden, God gave her the revelation. She goes, oh, that's what it means. There's so many rocks that if we don't cry out, if we don't praise him, these very rocks that are in every field, they will cry out and give praise to God. Amen. How do we worship? We worship in spirit and in truth. How do we worship? By listening to what he wants us to do. How do we worship? By washing ourselves the blood of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. How do we worship? We make it a house of prayer, not a den of thieves. We take the opportunity to see what God is doing at the moment that he's doing it. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go on and on and on. I could because of what God has done. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to say to you this morning, have ears to hear Amen. what God is saying to you. How he tells you to worship 
what he tells you to do, do. Amen. Oh, but there's not enough people here. Well, there's too many people here. Oh, the people here are loud. Oh, the people here are quiet. Or the people... I don't care what it is. You need to listen to what God is saying to you. There was a prophet who was complaining. After he had worked the miracle at Mount Carmel, he ran away because of what one woman said. Mm -hmm. Oh, I might as well just die, God. Oh. Mm -hmm. And he finally got all the way up to the mountain to listen to what God was going to say. And there was an earthquake. And there was a strong wind. And there was a fire. But God wasn't in the earthquake. God wasn't in the strong wind. God wasn't in the fire. It was in a still, Amen. small voice. And he said the same thing that he had told him before. What are you doing here? Oh, I can make all the excuses in the world. Just like the prophet. But then you need to listen. This morning, listen to what God has for you. And be ready for the healing that he wants to bring to you. Let's close in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord God, let us have ears to hear. Let us be ready to worship. Let us worship you in spirit and in truth. Let us go to your word and let us have it on our heart. Let us go to you and repent of all the things. None of us are without sin. It says if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship. Lord, let us have that fellowship with you. Let us walk in your light. Walk in your presence. We pray right now that this would be a house of prayer. There are many here today that are believers. And there are many that are wanting to be believers. So we pray that you would strengthen each of our faith. We pray for a healing, spiritually and physically, that you would touch those who are dealing with, with problems of the body and need a physical touch. And let them know how much you love them. Touch those who are dealing with spiritual battles and know that you care for them too and that you can add strength that we will run and not be weary we shall walk and not faint yeah. we shall rise up with wings of eagles Lord God as we wait on you let us do that as we worship you that whatever the situation we would give you the honor the glory and the praise and worship you in spirit and truth in Jesus mighty name amen. 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 amen I pray a benediction upon each one of us as we leave this place Lord God we pray Lord God that we would leave changed yes. that we would leave healed that we would leave strengthened that we would be leaving and ready to serve you to minister in any way that you would say to us to do. Lord God, that we might be able to come into your presence and that you would say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Let us be faithful servants to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For all that he has done for us, we thank you and praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. God bless you all.